everybody. So I want to ask you all a couple of questions first. And I would love for you to hold these questions in the back of your mind as we work through this talk tonight. So my first question is this. How do you define success for your life? And have you ever thought about what it would look like for you, your loved ones, your community, and ultimately everybody in this world to actually thrive? So as a kid, I was super inquisitive. And I used to ask questions like these of adults, as well as questions like, what did you want to be when you grow up? Or are you happy? Or what brings you joy? And I used to ask these questions because I lived in a world where I saw love as well as hate. I saw joy and pain. And I saw freedom as well as oppression. And I, I desperately wanted to understand better how more people, more communities, more families, and ultimately more people in our world could actually experience more of the love, the joy, and the freedom as opposed to hate, pain, and oppression. And for some reason, I just thought that maybe if we start at that individual level, it might multiply up. And so at a young age, I decided that my goal was going to be to figure out how to create more patterns that resulted in more people being able to thrive. And so just the other day, I was at this networking event, and people were introducing themselves and saying what they do. And then it, it was my turn. And so I gave my usual spiel I was giving at that time, and it was followed by the usual blank stares and awkward moments and discomfort and some brave person saying, well, uh, that sounds really complex and then everybody dispersing and leaving me. And so I decided in that moment that I was no longer going to describe what I do in that way and rather pick something very concise, very simple. In short, I'm a pattern recognizer, analyzer, and strategizer. And so what does that mean? It means that I studied music because I saw that music and art and culture had the ability to connect people across difference. I, I could see that people, two people who would otherwise be in completely different camps and disagree or maybe even hate each other, when you put their jam on, they're definitely going to dance or tap their toe. And then uh, I also studied sociology because I was really curious about human behavior and how we build and develop structures and systems that guide our everyday lives. And then I studied law because I was interested in the, re the relationship between law and policy. And I saw that they created these systems and these structures that we navigate every day in our lives. And so for me, those things did not operate in silos or different box, but they were all interconnected. And I was really curious about figuring out how to bring those things together when we think about the world that we live in today. And so earlier I said that my goal was to figure out how to create more patterns that resulted in more people thriving. So what do I mean by thriving? I'm talking about success, prosperity, but just not in the general sense, at that individual level, self-defined success, community-defined success. And what do I mean by patterns? So when I'm talking about patterns, I'm talking about what are called fractals. And for those of you who don't know what fractals are, fractals are these infinitely complex patterns that occur in science or in nature, and they repeat, they're self-similar. And what that means is that they repeat at the multiple levels of scale. So if we were to take this image and blow it up and put it on every single wall in this room, whether you look at the smallest level of it up to the largest, it's going to be the exact same pattern. And so I became curious and wanted to know, all right, so if these patterns occur in science and in nature, then could they occur in, uh, occur in other areas of our lives, in our world? And then for me, what clicked in my brain is that the world around us is a giant fractal. And the smallest level of those fractals are human beings and individuals. Because we create systems, we create structures, and we have our, our human behavior that creates the world that we have around us. And so I began to wonder, OK, so if it appears in that way, what are some patterns that I see in my day-to-day -day life with the people I work with and the organizations and entities? And so I created this fractal. And some of you could see some of the words and the circles and the images, but from where you're sitting, it essentially looks like a giant pattern, maybe a little complex. But if you zoom in, it's really not all that complex. It has six factors, two circles, two boxes, another figure, and this chain in the middle. And so what this is is what I see every day when people are looking to take a leap of faith and create a new pattern in their life that doesn't currently exist and what happens along the way. And so some of you may be wondering, hey, it's like close to my bedtime. What is this lady talking about? And so <laughs> in your life, <laughs> do you, have you ever tried to do something and find yourself in this circle and cycle that just keeps going and you don't like the results that you're getting? Well, you're stuck in a pattern that's not working for you. You're stuck in a pattern that's not serving you. And so this is what this is about. 
circle one is really where you get that spark, that idea like, hey, I want to start a business, or I want to lose 10 pounds, ask that guy out, I want to go on this big trip, something. It's that idea, that, that big piece. And then circle two is where it's like, all right, so we've identified this idea, this thing that you want to do. So how are we going to get there? And what's going to be different in your world as a result of you doing something with circle one? How are you going to change your world, your community, or, or your life? And so those are the two circles. Then in the middle, you have the leap of faith chain. And those have little rings in them because that's where you're figuring out how you're going to get from circle one to circle two. It's all the plans, the strategies, the steps, the processes. And then box one and box two, the, and the image, the access image, those are the things that can get in the way of you getting from circle one to circle two. And I'm going to talk more about box one and box two and say a quick bit about the image, the access image, because uh, that's a deeper conversation. Essentially, what happens there is you can have somebody who can have really innovative ideas and, and have the ability to see the vision of what's going to change, and they get going on this path. They get past box one and box two, but they come up against a wall. And usually that wall is in the form of needing to have access to information, people, resources, you name it. And so I get really excited when I'm working with people in circle one and circle two. I'm sitting here dancing between the circles, drinking champagne, saying the world's going to be awesome. We're going to use this gift and just throw it out there. And so those are the fun places. But getting stuck in that middle place there in the leap of faith with box one and box two, that's where it gets tricky. And so box one that was up there before was really looking at others, external factors that get in the way of people taking these leaps of faith in their life. And box two is self, internal factors that get in the way of taking that leap of faith. And so box one is interesting because that's when you have this great idea, you share it with somebody, it's like, ooh, I don't know if you can do that. Or I've never seen anybody do anything like that before. That's not really your thing. Or we don't do that. And so what's interesting about box one moments in life is that I find it's really fascinating how sometimes others can box us in, place us into situations or ideas based off of our identity or your experience and saying, like, this is where you belong. This is how you are to live your life. And what usually happens when these things come against somebody's idea is one of two things. First, what I find is that people stop in their leap of faith. So they break the chain. They just give up. They're like, no, nope, this isn't my journey. We're going to be done with this. I'm not going to do this great thing that could have changed my life or somebody else's. And they're done. The second thing that I see that happens for folks is that what they end up doing is they take what others are projecting onto them and others are sharing with them. And I'm not saying that others don't have good input to offer you, but it's being cognizant of the voices that you're listening to. And so when others then inform how you're defining success, how you're defining what thriving looks like, and you're now trying to fit yourself into a box. And uh, so this is real, this is real life. It took me forever to get myself into that box. And it was painful because I have bad knees. And it took me even longer to get out of that box. <laughs> but the crazy thing in life is that how many times do we try to fit ourselves into situations and boxes that we have no business trying to squeeze ourselves into? We don't belong there. When you do that, you're doing a disservice to yourself and you're doing a disservice to others around you because you're hiding your light, you're hiding your talents, your unique perspective, and that might change the world one day. So don't do it. Just don't. It was really painful. I don't, I don't, I don't recommend that. <laughs> and so... The other piece about that to take into consideration when you're fitting to other people's boxes, I really want people to think about not letting the ideas and the perspectives and views that others may have of who you are today shape who you become. Just don't. And so the other thing that I want to say, too, in that vein is that this isn't it unique to individuals. I have definitely seen government entities that I work with who have these great ideas that they've researched or school districts, and it's like, hey, we found this program or this effort or initiative that can change our world. It can impact tens and twenties and hundreds of kids' lives or community members' lives, and they come up against this external force or voice that's saying, well, no, it's a group of constituents who are saying, we're pushing back on this, we don't like it, or parents. And it's not to say that their perspective and voices don't matter. They absolutely do. But I'm, what I'm saying is that you don't stop the leap of faith, especially when you can have an opportunity to impact so many other lives for the good. What you do there is you pause and you assess what patterns are taking place in their lived experience, their life, as to why there's this pushback. It could be that maybe they were never engaged, or maybe they're afraid or they don't understand. And at that moment, then you co-create and figure out what thriving could look like for folks and continue to take those leaps of faith. And so... Earlier I said there's a second box, the box two, the internal factors. So that's self and what happens there. And so 
I also said earlier that I get really excited when I jump between circle one and circle two, getting people all jazzed up to take these leaps of faith. What usually happens is we're getting all excited, and I send folks back out into the world, and I put on Eye of the Tiger, and they're pumped up, and it's like, take those leaps of faith. It's going to be awesome. And then they leave, and I say a prayer for them, and it's like, I believe that they can do it, but Lord, I couldn't do that. That's way too risky for me. Definitely not my journey. And what happens to me when a leap of faith moment occurs in my individual life is it's like this uh, code red moment. And I don't know if you've ever visualized what the inside of your head looks like. Not like your actual brain, but if it were a production. For me, it's this giant warehouse that has tons of file cabinets. And when a leap of faith moment occurs, I see that little lady from The Incredibles with like the black bob and the glasses frantically running around screaming. And then the little yellow minions are also running around trying to help her figure out what the heck we're going to do in this leap of faith moment. And then from there, what happens is like my artist self is like, we got to do this. It's going to be great. And then the lawyer self is absolutely not. This is risky. We haven't even researched it. And then my researcher side is like, we will be the research subject. Let's do this. And it's utter chaos in my mind when these leap of faith moments occur. And so what ends up happening is that internal box two moment I'm talking about. So box two that breaks this leap of faith chain from us completing this pattern that could be really impactful is that we have things like fear and worry and self-doubt and analysis paralysis that get in the way of us completing these patterns. And so for me, when I was getting ready to start my business, I, as I said, I'm pretty risk averse. I had this really rigid plan of I want to work for this organization for three years, build my capital, and then slowly grow the business while I'm working there, and then fully transition into that business. Well, life had other plans. And so about three weeks before I was about to be out of my apartment because I was going to buy a home, the organization I was working for went under. Uh, they closed, and so I found myself without a job and decided that I wasn't going to buy that home because I wanted to take, that, take the opportunity to start my business, take that leap of faith then, and use the capital that I would have taken to buy the home. So I found myself in this great place, I call it, where I was uh, residentially liberated, as I like to call it. And uh, my friends just called me homeless. And so... <laughs> So there I was, living in multiple states and multiple basements and spare rooms and hotel rooms while I was trying to grow this business. And trust me, during that time, I had a lot of those internal chaos moments with the little Incredibles lady. Like, I don't know if I can do this, what's going to happen? And um, what was really fascinating during that time in my life is I had people around me that I call mirrors. And essentially what they do is in those moments where you're freaking yourself out, they can reflect back to you who you are, that you're great and that you can do this. And uh, it's not to say that they're yes people. I don't want yes people in my life, and neither do you. You want people who will keep it, keep it real with you, as my grandma used to say, people who will be honest with you during these moments. But they're also there to help you re-strategize and think, what do we need to do to make sure that you complete this pattern? You can have that positive change that you're seeking in your life and possibly ultimately the world. And so I call those people, besides mirrors, also your board of personal advisors. And I think folks really need to have that when you're taking those major leaps. And people also need to think about who you have in your circles in these really scary moments in life, because sometimes everybody may not be for you, but you need to be really cognizant of who you surround yourself with when you're making these really big decisions. And so earlier I'd asked you all two questions, and I have one last question for you. What could it look like for you to take a leap? And so I was really blessed and fortunate to have two amazing grandmothers in my life. And so one used to tell me that, you know what, word of mouth is not a load on your head. And the other one used to tell me that nothing beats a failure but a try. And so what that means is that sometimes when you're taking these leaps in your life, you may jump and you might have some bumps and bruises and get knocked down, but it doesn't mean that you stop the pattern. And the other piece is saying that, you know what, in your life, you're going to have pushback. You'll have people and, and circumstances that might be coming at you, but you cannot let those things weigh you down. And so although I don't know each and every one of you personally, I want you to know that I genuinely care about the leaps of faith that you take in your life. Why? Because when you decide to shift a pattern in your life, you just might shift a pattern in your community. And when you shift a pattern in your community, you just might shift a pattern in our world. Thank you. <laughs>